Darren from Protopilot here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into a trigger called Chain inside of Protopilot. Now, Chain is a really powerful trigger and it's also um, one of the triggers that can confuse a lot of people. So I thought I'd run through a few different examples to show the power of what Chain can do. Um, so Chain is a trigger that allows you to connect the properties and values of one object to the properties and values of another object. And so to just show you what that, what that means, I'm just going to run you through what we're gonna be building. So all of these examples are using the chain trigger in, in, in some shape or form. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at doing is this minimized header. So here we're using the scroll of this list to control the width and height of this, um, this, this header. So that's the first thing we're gonna be looking at. We're then gonna step it up a little bit and we're gonna add an object inside of our minimized header and we're actually going to drive the, um, the position and properties, the scale property of the, of the circle also based on the scroll. We're then gonna be taking a look at the classic sticky header. So we're gonna be using the scroll to not only, not only reposition but stick a object, a header object to the boss to the top of the screen. So we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Next up, we're going to look at something a little bit different. So we're going to be connecting a horizontal paging view to a to a slider control to a sliding tab. This could be and you can affect it from the bottom here as you just swipe from page to page and you can also tap the, the, the control at the top. And then finally, we're going to be creating this interface, which you can imagine this might be a photo interface and we're going to control the position and size of some of these rectangles by sliding this control into different locations. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So first up, we're gonna look at creating this minimized header. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be chaining our list scroll position to the, the scale of our, our rectangle here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the list and we're going to add chain. So chain is a trigger in a section of conditional triggers. So these are some of the most powerful triggers that you've got available to you within Protopi. So we're going to select chain and if we look at the properties inspector, we can see we've got just two options, two things we need to choose. The first thing is the target. So that's the object which we're going to use as our source of the, of the um, property we're going to change from, from, for our chain. So this is, in this case, is going to be our list. Um, it's pre-chosen our list because we'd already selected it before we added the chain. And then the second box that we've got available to us is where we choose the property that we want to chain to. So in this case, because Protopi can see that we've got a scrolling container, it's pre-chosen the scroll property. But you can see here there's a whole bunch of properties. You've got access to most, most standard properties on objects within, within Protopi. Um, so we um, we want to keep the, the scroll position, so that's good. We're going to we're going to leave that as is. Um, so that's the the source. Now we need to choose the target. So the target in this case is going to be our header. So we're going to select that and we're going to add a uh, response. And you can see here instantly that there's a lot of responses which are grayed out so chain isn't supported for every single response inside of protopi only certain ones 
and in this case we want to choose scale we're going to be using the scale response and when we choose the scale response you'll see that the properties expense the properties inspector shows a slightly different view because we're using scale within inside inside a chain we actually need to give protopoint a range of values to connect these two things together okay so we're going to be just um, scaling by size so that's literal values so the first thing we need to do is we need to define the the scroll of the list so the range of motion the range of movement we're going to use for the scroll so all scrolls start at zero so that's why we've got zero pre-populated pre for us there and we're going to add in this second box 60 so we're going to scroll from zero to 60 and moving over to these four boxes on the right because this is a vertical scrolling view we're going to completely ignore the width boxes we're not going to be we're not going to be changing the the width um, we're just going to be changing the height so we're going to put our first value in for the the height we're going to change so the the starting value is going to be the height of our rectangle as it currently stands so we can see here we've got a height of 120 so we want the starting height to also be 120 so what we're basically saying here is when the scroll position is at zero the height of the of the header is going to be 120 and then the next range we need to deal with is when the scroll reaches 60 we want the height to be 60. Okay, um, what we can see here is that the difference between these two sets of values is exactly the same, it's 60. So from 0 to 60 is 60 and from 120 to 60 is 60. Um, so that's given us what is called a one-to-one -one mapping. For every pixel the scroll view moves, we're going to move a single pixel on our height and that's going to make it feel like it's connected. You can of course change the ratio of the height to make it give you a more of a parallax effect by just changing these values, doubling these values or what have you. But this is what we're going to go with. And we're going to run this. And when we scroll our scroll view, you can see that the scale of our rectangle is scaling and you can see that it's actually moving at the same rate. It's moving at the same rate until it gets to 60 and then it's stopping because that's purely the range that we've asked it to move to. So we're only moving it within a range of 60 pixels. So that's our first demo of using Chain. So next up we're going to build upon the minimized header that we did in the first section and we're going to actually we've got this circle we're going to add some scaling to so let's see how we do that so we've already got the set the same setup as as what we had previously so what we're going to do here is we're going to select our circle we've now got this circle inside the header and we're going to add another scale okay and we're going to set the range of motion to 60 again so from 0 to 60 we're going to use the same same range and this time we're going to fill out all four of these boxes. We're going to set the first value to 60, which is the current size of the circle, and we're going to scale it to a width of 30. And we're going to just add the same values to the second because we want it to stay a perfect circle. So let's test that, see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got it scaling, but we can see we've got an issue here with the um, circle it's not centered it's kind of just stuck to the bottom of the of the header when it's scaled so let's let's go back and fix that so we're going to select our circle again and, and we're going to also add a move and we're going to set the range again to 60 0 to 60 and this time we're going to change the Y value from 30 to 15. Okay, let's 
test that and see what that looks like. Cool, so now we can see that the circle is not only scaling, but it's also moving so it stays dead center within the Minimize header. Next up, we are going to create the well-known sticky header pattern. In this example, we are going to make the search box move and stick to the top of the screen as the user scrolls down the page. Okay, so if we have a look at the, the structure of our, of our file, so we've got a search box here in this container group, we've got a header, and we've finally got our list container. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select the list and we're gonna add chain. And we're going to then select our header and we're going to add a move to the chain. We're going to set the range from 0 to 60. And we're going to set the Y range from 0 to 60. Okay, so let's just have a quick check of that. Okay, so we see that something already is going a bit of a miss. We've got our header going in the wrong direction. And that's because if we go back to our move, we've actually set the the um, the Y value from 0 to 60 on a move response. Um, and the thing about scroll and move is that they they actually go in two different directions. So scroll actually goes from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, and it's that that's its positive axis. But actually when we've got an object in our scene, if I have a look, if you have a look at the Y value here, it's currently at naught. If I move it off the screen, you can see that it's actually gone to a minus number. So we need to actually move in a minus number to make it go in the correct direction. So we're just gonna change this 60 to minus 60. Okay, let's test that and see how that looks. Okay, so now we've got our header going in the correct direction. So that's looking good. Okay, so the next step we want to also make the search field move. So we're going to select, let's just get rid of the preview. So we select search and we're gonna add another move to our chain. And we're gonna set the range again to 60, zero to 60. And this time we're going to set the Y value to 60 and to zero. So we're starting at position, let's select this. We're starting at position 60 on the Y and we actually want to move this up into, into the zero position. So that's the motion that we've just created here. So let's test that. So as we scroll, our navigation is going off screen and then when our search bar hits zero, it sticks. So we've now got our navigation scrolling off and our search sticking to the top of the screen. In this next example, we are going to recreate the paging with tabs pattern. So we've already got our paging content set up here in our carousel container and we're going to use this tab navigator container with a selected and the tab track so we're mainly going to be working with this selected object and we're going to connect, connect these things together. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our carousel container and we're going to add a chain and we're going to open up our tab navigator and we're going to select our tab and we're going to add a move and we're going to set the range to 346 so from 0 to 346 and then on the x we're going to map that to 0 160. okay let's test that make sure that's working correctly so there we go when we page our content, our tab is moving. So that's cool, that's the first bit. So next up, we're going to enable the tab to be tapped, which will in turn also page the carousel. We are effectively creating a toggle button here. So we are going to need to first create a variable to save the state of the tab. In this case, we want to know whether the tab is on the left or on the right of the track. 
So if we come down to our variables panel in the bottom left hand corner, we're going to add a variable just for this scene. And we're going to name it tab position. And we're going to set its initial value to one. Okay, next up, we're going to select our tab track and we're going to add a tap. And to this tap, we're going to add a condition. And the condition we're going to set is we're going to look at the tab position variable and we want to know when it's equal to one. Okay, so let's go back and select our selected tab and we're going to, to this condition, add a move. And we're going to set the move to 160. And we're going to leave the duration at 0 0.2, that should be fine. Next, we're going to add an assign, which allows us, assign is a response that allows us to assign values to variables. And we want to effectively choose our tab position variable, and we want to set the variable formula to two. So we're going to increment our variable value to two because our tab is going to be in the, in, in the second position. Cool. We're now going to add another condition. We need to deal with the other side of it. We're going to again select our tab position variable. And this time we're going to look for when it equals two. We're then going to add another move on our, on our selected object. And this time we're going to set the X to zero. And again, we're going to leave the duration at two. We're going to then add an assign response, choose our variable again, and we're going to assign the formula of one. So effectively we're sending it back to its beginning position. Okay. So let's try that. So if I tap on the right hand side, my tab is moving to the right. And if I tap on the left hand side, my tab is moving to the left. Okay, so we've got the, the tap interaction working. We just need to connect it to the paging content. So let's go back and do that. Okay, so let's select our tab and we're going to add another chain. And this time we're going to select the carousel. And to this chain, we're going to add a scroll response. Okay, so our range this time is going to be from zero to 160 because that's the range on our, on our tab here. That's the range of motion on our tab. And the scroll position is going to be the reverse of what we did in the first section. It's going to be going from zero to three, four, six. Okay, so let's preview that. So now when I tap on the right hand side, my, the scroll position on my page and container moves. And if I tap on the left, it also moves. And then I can still page it as I could do previously. Okay, in this final example, we are going to build on our experience of mapping interactions to a tab's position, but this time without any variables. I've taken inspiration from iOS's Photos app. In this example, certain squares will scale depending on the position of the tab. Okay, so let's first set up tab one. So in the tab navigator, we're going to select one and we're gonna add a tab trigger. And we're going to rename it to tab one. We're going to select our tab selected and we're going to add a move. And we're going to set this move to zero. Cool. So next up, we're going to set up tab two. We're going to add another tab. Name it tab two. Choose tab selected. And we're going to add a 
and move again. And this time we're going to set it to 80. We're going to open tab, the tab navigator and choose tab selected. I'm going to add a chain and we're going to make sure that the X property is selected. Okay, let's select, let's go into our images and we're going to select image one and to the chain we're going to add a scale. Okay, so the range within this scale is going to be from 0 to 80 and we're going to set the width to 80. And 343 three. and on the height we're going to set 80 and 255 five. okay next up we're going to set up tab 3 so we're going to select let's just close our images here make it a little bit easier to navigate around so we're going to select 3 add another tab rename it to tab 3 And we're going to select tab selected and to this we're going to add a move and we're going to set the move to this time move to 160. okay let's um, select tab selected add a chain Again, we want the X property selected. We're going to select image 17. And to that chain, we're going to add a scale. And we're going to set the range to 80. From 80 to 160. And this time, we're going to scale this one uniformly. So we're going to set both the width and the height this to the same value, so 80, 168, 80, 168. Okay, let's test that, see, see how far we've got. So obviously we've got a bit of a, an issue here um, with our tabs, let's just go back and check that. So yeah, here's the problem. We've um, got the wrong object selected. So I need to select image one. Okay, let's test that. That should be a bit better. So if I move to position one, we can see now we've got our first object moving. And if I move to position two, we can see that our second square is also scaling. But we can see we've got an issue here because this square is actually sitting underneath these two squares. So let's go back and fix that. So let's close this off. So we're going to select image 17 again. And we're going to, to our tab three, we're going to add another response called reorder. And we're going to choose this option here. So reorder allows us to change the layer order within a group so we can't move an object from one group into another group but we can affect all of the objects inside of a single group so we're going to choose this third option which is effectively going to move it to the top of the stack so that should fix our issue so let's just test that there we go that's now working nicely okay on to tab four so we're going to select tab four and we're going to add another tab. And we're going to rename it to tab four. And again, we're going to select tab select. So you can see there's a lot of repetitiveness to what we're doing here. We're going to add a move. And we're going to set the move to 160. We're going to keep our tab selected selected I <laughs> should have really chosen a different name for that I think um, and we're going to add another chain and again we want the X property 
selected and we're going to go into our images and we're going to find image 20. Down the bottom here we're going to select that and to our chain we're going to add a scale. Okay so for this range we're going to set its initial value to 160 and that's going to go from 160 to 240 and then again for the this object we need to set the width and the height so we're going to set the width to 80 from 80 to 343 and the height is going to go from 80 to 431 and again we're going to need to add a reorder and we're going to add that to the tap for trigger here making sure we've got our image 20 selected and again we want to put it to the top of the stack so we're just going to choose the third option okay so let's do a final test on that so I'm in position one if I go to position two I get my first square if I go to position three, I get my second square. If I go to position four, hmm, let's just double check that. Position four doesn't seem to be working. Let's close this off and double check our tab four. Ah, so we need to move it to 240, not 120. So let's preview that again. So we've got our, our first square, our second square, and then finally our third square. Great. Okay, so this about wraps it up for this video. So I've shown you lots of different ways of using the chain trigger. Um, do have a play with it. It's a really powerful tool, and um, there's some amazing things you can create with it. Um, really think out of the box with it so you can use you can use it for things that may not be necessarily obvious to you anyway hope you enjoyed that and i'll hopefully see you next time on the channel make sure you hit subscribe if you like the video and please give it a like as well that would really help me out and hopefully i'll see you next time